Alright, so for, for years now, I've always said that gimbals are too slow to follow the fast-paced action of a basketball game. I wouldn't even try to film action, to be honest, with a gimbal, especially if you're filming like, you know, fast-paced uh, sports, you're always going to be behind the ball. Like, there's no way you're going to be able to follow a basketball and be on point with a gimbal. So tonight, I'm going to test this theory. I brought this gimbal along and my goal is to film the entire game with the gimbal. Um, this is, by the way, the Wyon Cinepeer Webill 3E. Long name, but uh, yeah, this is a new model. Uh, it's coming out in a week or so. By the time you watch this video, obviously it's been uh, it's been out already, but I'm here to test it. Webill sent me this, uh, uh, Wyon sent me this, uh, see, I'm already confused by the name. They, they sent me the gimbal for free. Obviously they're not paying me. I can say or do what I want. So my goal is to use it to film the entire game and see if I can stand correct it and actually find a way to make a fully gimbal filmed basketball video engaging and fun to watch. So we'll see what happens. By the way, I also wanted to mention that because I'm on a gimbal, obviously zooming would be uh, difficult and it will also affect the balance of it all. So I decided to go with a prime lens. I'm filming with a 35 mil. It'll be interesting to see how I manage to get a lot of variety in my shots, even though my framing will be the same the entire game. Oh my God, I'm just playing with them now, yeah. Oh my God, what she's saying, say it loud, yeah. I can't respect it. I'm in a gym, but I am not flexing. It came from a Ford, I'm needing a Lexus. Shooting like Luca, I told him I'm next, shit. Oh my God, I'm just playing with them now, yeah Oh my God, what she saying, say it loud, yeah I can't respect it, I'm in the gym, but I am not flexing it Came from a Ford, I'm needing a Lexus Shooting like Luke, I told him I'm next, shit I got a ball, I told him I'm here, I'm not waiting for y'all They hit my phone, but I ignore the car I got the drive and I see that they star I bought a whip and I paid it in cash Numbers keep growing like what's on the dash Drop me the Addy, I pull it the maps Dressed in the white tee, I bought it a gap Hitting the gas, he trailing behind This in his games, but I stay on my grind I told my fan that we all gonna be fine Said I'm a star, that's why they all align Said I don't rob it like all of these guys I told them all like a million times Waiting for me, but they know I arrived What I'm doing to y'all, it should be a crime I told him. Oh my God, I'm just playing with him now, yeah Oh my God, what she saying, say it loud, yeah I can't respect it, I'm in the gym, but I am not flexing Came from a Ford, I'm needing a Lexus Shooting like Luca, I told him I'm next, shit <laughs> All right, so a lot to uh, debrief from my experience filming a basketball game with this gimbal. But before we get into the pros and cons and also what not to do and also a bit of what to do when doing so, let me first uh, quickly talk specifically about this uh, Jiyun Cinepeer uh, Webill 3E gimbal. I'll be honest, I've only used the gimbal probably four or five times in my life, and it was always to film a media day or something like that, never a sporting event. But even for someone as green as me, the Webill 3E was actually pretty easy to use. Balancing it is very straightforward, the grip is quite comfortable in my opinion, everything is where it should be. You can even start and stop your recordings on the grip through a Bluetooth connection. And there are seven working modes in total, including a portrait mode for which you can actually use your camera in the vertical position with no extra accessories necessary. But I will say though that the bigger and heavier your camera kit is, the trickier it will be to balance the gimbal in the vertical position. But anyway, if you want to learn more about it, I encourage you to click the link in the description where you'll find all the extra info you need about pricing, features, and everything else. Now, as far as the pros and cons of filming a full game with a gimbal, well, obviously the biggest pro is the stability. I also really like the fact that I was able to shoot from super low. When I was sitting down on the baseline, I was holding the camera about an inch off the floor, slightly tilted upwards, and that alone would produce somewhat of a unique perspective. And then I would just move the gimbal up and towards the action every time someone would shoot or drive to the basket. And again, that movement was kind of unique and very cool to watch. 
Another big advantage with a gimbal is that every shot has the opportunity or the potential to be way more dynamic. For example, if I'm shooting handheld from the sidelines, I might be panning left to right or vice versa, but I'm certainly not moving my feet very much while recording. But with a gimbal, I can actually follow the action, literally move with the point guard and again produce a very unique and very dynamic sequence. But unfortunately, filming a basketball game with a gimbal is not all sunshine and rainbows. For example, the main con is that you lose the ability to use a zoom in real time. And the main consequences from that are that all your shots are framed exactly the same. Also, filming the action further away becomes almost impossible. And my biggest pet peeve of all is that the refs are a lot harder to avoid because you can't just go tighter and crop them out. Another con with using a gimbal is that you can't use a long or heavy lens without having serious balancing issues. So if you were thinking of using like a 70 to 200 or a Tamron 35 to 150 to get a bunch of dynamic uh, tight shots around the court, well, good luck with that because the motor of your gimbal is not going to like that at all. Another big con for me is, again, for balancing reasons, you can't really use a monitor with your camera unless you get an extra accessory that allows you to attach the monitor to your grip instead of the camera. Like this one, for example, for my DJI RS3. But even then, you need the right HDMI cable that is not constantly going to get in the way of your camera movements. I feel like a monitor would help tremendously because during my gimbal movements or when I hold the camera super low, it's almost impossible for me to see the screen at times, so I'm basically going in blind. Also, you probably noticed that I used a mist filter which made all the lights in the arena glow like crazy, and honestly, it didn't look that bad on my camera's uh, small LCD screen, but if I had seen it on a 7-inch monitor, I probably would have taken that filter off because I don't think that look works particularly well in this situation, but hey, you live and you learn. I do have a few words of advice for you guys for filming basketball or any other sport with a gimbal. First of all, don't stay in the same spot for too long. Move around the court a lot. You basically want to get as many different POVs as possible. Also, film the crowd a lot because you'll need those crowd shots again to add more variety to your footage. Framing wise, I was very happy with my 35mm focal length. It was wide enough to capture most of the action and get tight shots at the basket. So I highly recommend it for basketball. I don't recommend, however, filming at a low aperture, like an f2.8, for example, because as I mentioned earlier, uh, it's often very hard to see your LCD screen properly. So you end up not really knowing if you're in focus or not and relying heavily on your autofocus. So to give it a fighting chance, I recommend uh, using an aperture of at least f4, if not higher, and that will guarantee much better results. Also, don't do like I did, just showing up to film a basketball game with zero gimbal experience. Instead, get a few reps in at a training or a pickup game and then go film a real game. I was behind the ball on way more shots than I'm willing to admit, not because it's that hard to get it right, but simply because it was my first time doing it. So to address my comments from 2022 when I said that it was impossible to follow the fast-paced action of a basketball game with a gimbal, I now think that it is possible, but you do need to film fairly wide. And even then, it is a skill that you definitely need to work on and develop to eventually become naturally good at it. But overall, I'm quite happy with the results. I think that the final product wasn't that great, but now I know what's possible and how to produce it. So my next attempt, I'm sure, will be much better. And that, my friends, is what sports videography is all about. Again, there's an affiliate link in the description for all the details about the brand new Jiyun Cinepeer WeBuild 3E. So go check that out if you want to learn more about it or maybe buy it. But if a gimbal is too expensive and you'd like to learn how to film super steady shots without one for free, just check out the video appearing on your screen right now where I'll teach you my very own and very easy to learn technique to film sports handheld with no shakes.